Hi everyone, this is Brandon coming at you from Top10Gamer.com. We're going to take a look today at a $650 gaming PC build specifically for Battlefield 4. Before I go on, if any of this is TLDW, see what I did there? Then you can always check the part list in the description below and I've got links there and more information and another link to my write-up where I've got my research and, and other links that uh, can help you out with this build as well. For processor, we are going to go with the i5-4430, uh, which is a really good value processor at around $180. Considering the FX8350 costs $200, and a good overclocker like the i5-4670K uh, is about $220. You get a really good deal here for a standard CPU. If you guys want to overclock, you can go with the the K model of this. Uh, why I didn't go with the AMD one? Well, it was more expensive, and to be honest, I think as... Uh, this price point, uh, you're still getting better performance out of the i5. Now, if you want to go a value play here, then go with the FX8320, which is about $160, and use that in conjunction with an AM3 Plus motherboard. Okay, here's a few graphics card considerations for uh, this particular build. We're going to use the uh, Sapphire Radeon HD7870. I was able to find one on rebate this month for, month for about $169.99. There is a cheaper MSI version for $159, but I really like this uh, one from Sapphire. Great deal this month. AMD is ob obviously uh, in cahoots with uh, DICE when it comes to Battlefield 4, and we've seen that. We've got Mantle coming up, and as far as benchmarks, uh, AMD uh, graphics cards are... Uh, winning pretty much at every price point and so if you guys are if this is the most intense title that you're going to play this year um, we've got Mantle coming up that's going to boost these cards even further yeah there's going to be some drivers that will turn it around I, I use an Nvidia card myself but you know if it were me going forward I and this was my most intense title I would definitely go with an AMD card now other cards that you could consider there's the R9 270X, which is basically this same card on paper, just a tiny bit faster. But I went with the HD7870 because, again, it's basically the same card, except for it's a lot less money right now. You can get it for like 150, 160 bucks instead of like 210 dollars. Okay, so now how much RAM should you get, and what kind of RAM, and uh, what should the speed be, all that kind of stuff. So you know, Corsair recently came out with an article that showed that. Um, Improved RAM speeding, speed actually helped their FPS in Battlefield 4, and it really threw uh, a lot of people uh, for a loop, including myself, just because we, in the past, it was basically thought that, hey, and if you're at 1600 uh, or, or better, then, then you're good enough. So anyway, it, it's not something that should take over your entire build here, but if you can find RAM that happens to be faster for just about the same amount of money, then why wouldn't you do that? Um, well, you would, and you'd want to make sure that your motherboard is compatible. So we, what, what I chose here was uh, 8 gigabytes of G-Skill that I found at 2133 for about $75. I don't know how long this deal is going to last, but right now model uh, F3-17000CL11D-8GBXL, long model number, is on sale for about $75. Go with that RAM. Again, find a motherboard that's compatible, and that should lead to some future proofing for this rig. Okay, so the motherboard that I decided to go with was the Gigabyte GAZ87M-D3H. The reason I did that is that it's jam-packed full of features. It's got everything you want. It's compatible with that faster RAM. And right now, if you go to Newegg, it's got a $15 mailing rebate that makes it about $75. Genuinely, this board is going to cost you $105 to $110. So at a budget price point where we'd normally be getting uh, feature lacking boards with very little to offer, here we're actually getting a board with a ton of useful features. And it's C87 as well, so a great chipset for uh, overclocking and everything else you need. Okay, so uh, now on to the power supply. We're going to go with the CX500M. The last thing you want to do when picking out a power supply is go with something cheap. You don't want something ineffective going to all your expensive components. 
and you want something that is at least 80 plus this particular one is bronze certified so it's going to save you a lot of money uh, I think we did a video in the past that talked about that I've got an article on my website that talks about just how much it costs to run your computer over time you're definitely going to want uh, the better efficiency power supplies and 500 watts we went here because I went to the Thermaltake website where they've got the power supply calculator. I'll give you the uh, link to that in the description below. And for this entire build, uh, it was 310 watts. So as you can see, 500 here is plenty. If you're going to overclock, maybe you want a little more than that. But uh, overall, for most, uh, 500 watts is going to uh, be good enough. Okay, so for case, we're going to go with the NZXT Source 210. It's a cheap $30 case uh, with everything you need, and it gives you up to seven fan options if you want to keep your case really, really cool. And if you want to go beyond there, and that's not the case for you, I know not everybody's going to go with such a plain case, but there's a lot of us that just, the case itself doesn't matter so much. Like me, I'd just rather have straight performance. But if it does matter a lot to you, or you'd like some more fans up front, um, other good cases you could go with Cooler Master Elite 430 I really like the Half 912 and the NZXT Guardian 921 RB is a pretty good deal this month at uh, $60 okay so for the rest of the build we went with a 1 terabyte uh, Western Digital Blue Drive uh, lots of capacity for the $65 you spend and we actually removed the DVD drive from this build uh, my thinking in that was I wanted to pour as much as possible into the components and I have three DVD drives uh, in three different computers and honestly I use them maybe once a year when I'm making like a music uh, DVD or, or, or whatever so um, not that important to have a DVD drive, D drive and most likely you've got one in another build if you'd like and you could just hijack it from that build and add it to this one Okay, so here's the answer to the question that a lot of you have. What kind of FPS can you expect to get out of this rig? And I'll tell you right now, yeah, for 1080p on ultra settings, you can expect to get about 37 FPS. That's with AA on. Uh, but also, if you're willing to remove the anti-aliasing, you're going to get on average just around 50. Now, go between a mixture of 50 of uh, medium and high settings and you're going to end up uh, with FPS well in ex excess of 60. If you're like me and you like to play in that 120 range, then you can always go to low and tweak it there. And the game, I will tell you, the game looks good on low, medium, high, and ultra. You'll be surprised at how little difference you'll notice between like ultra and high or high and medium settings. So anyway, uh, I think that for this price point, that's uh, a great level of performance, and hopefully you guys think that too. Okay, that's my time for today, but I wanted to talk about something that's bothering me just a little bit, and that is that Google is forcing, forcing everyone to join Google Plus in order to uh, comment on YouTube. So I'm getting like a third of the amount of comments that I used to. And so if you guys will either go join my Google Plus page, we can interact there, or or uh, follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, on Facebook specifically, I usually post the write-ups a day in advance. And so if we're talking about a particular PC build, then I might post a rebate that's not even in that build that you guys should go take a look at. Or I might post benchmarks for that day that I'm using for a specific site or that I've seen. Just, Or, or maybe I'll just post something funny. So if you guys want to interact uh, more that's a good place to do it. Uh, hopefully you liked this video. If you did, you can help me out by pressing that like and subscribe button. We've got more great Battlefield 4 videos coming up, as well as PC builds and other hardware information. Again, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.